morning. Welcome to Morning Moments. Thank you for joining us today. Today I have uh, somebody from the Music City area, Nashville. What a beautiful area. He is a actor, a pastor, an author, uh, and he is uh, so much more. Uh, it's my privilege to bring to Morning Moments, Ben Graham. Welcome to Morning Moments. Uh, thank you, Andy. I appreciate it. So glad to be on here and uh... I've had several of my friends who joined you, and I've been looking forward to this. Uh, well, Ben, tell us a little bit about yourself Why I ask the question, what do you do and why do you do it? Well, of course, uh, I have been a senior pastor for 21 years. Um, you know, as a, uh, I'm a fifth generation preacher, preacher's kid, like most preacher's kids, you know, I made the mistake of telling my dad I would not be a preacher. And so you know what happened that immediately stamped me to be a preacher. And uh, I heard one time this, this, this uh, missionary who was from Africa, he said, I told God I would never go to Africa. Well, guess what? God sent to Africa. And I heard that as a kid, I was like, that's how it works. I was like, all right, Lord, I'll never go to Hawaii, Bahama, Jamaica. And uh, my reverse psychology didn't work on God. But um, I grew up in a preacher's home and, uh, you know, wanted to play sports, wanted to do all these different things. My brothers and I started uh, singing and touring when I was 13. We recorded our first album. We had sung with our family growing up as a kid. Uh, Dad preached all over the place. And um, then at, at 14, I, I felt God called me to, to be a preacher. And so I surrendered and, and literally uh, the next day preached my first sermon at a conference. And it kind of started from there. But um, uh, God blessed us. Uh, Ten years ago, we moved to Nashville uh, to start a church and uh, got involved in, in uh, the music city. And, and boy, we just love it here. And then uh, we've been making films. I've, I've been able to act in about 15, uh, maybe 16 projects and uh, did my first film when I was a kid and then uh, kind of got out of that and then moved here and God started opening doors and, and we uh, launched Graham Family Films and um, we just make faith and family based uh, movies. And, and so we've done that. We just recently, uh, our newest one uh, that we released is called Pardon by Grace, which is a true story. Uh, that we have Joey Lawrence and Michael W. Smith uh, are in it. I'm in it. Uh, and uh, we uh, tell about this guy who was arrested 35 times from the time he was 13 till he became uh, mid 30s and now has one of the, the greatest, uh, just best prison ministries out there. God's using them in a great way. And it's a wonderful movie. Uh, and we're excited about that. But uh, that's me. And I, I guess uh, when I first started out, I was your typical pastor. That's all I did. And somewhere along the way, God began to open up doors for us to get involved in many other things and uh, just striving to try to reach people uh, with the gospel uh, in a variety of capacities. There's only one way to get to heaven. That's through Jesus. Uh, but I think there's many opportunities in how we reach people with the gospel. And uh, unfortunately, people don't just show up at church and go, hey, how do I get saved? Sometimes we have to go out, uh, as the Bible says, go out to the highways and byways and compel them. And, you know, we go out. And so we're trying to do that in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And with the name, like last name, like Graham, you're just not grandfathered into the kingdom. You have to make a commitment yourself, right? You pretty much, well, when you're born a Graham, it's the doctor's like, Hey, congratulations. It's a preacher. And uh, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much it. But I think there's about, um, I think there's like 25, 28 preachers right now in the family. Um, but, you know, I was blessed. My parents, um, even after I surrendered when I was 14, I had scholarships to play sports and my dad would come to practice and I'd say, Hey dad, what do you think I should do? And he said, just do what God wants. And I was like, yeah, but if you were me, what would you do? He's like, I would do what God wants. I was like, you're not getting it, but I'm thankful. They didn't push me into ministry. They just wanted me to find what God wanted. And I believe with all my heart, they would have been content with that. Uh, I have one brother who went into the medical uh, field and didn't feel called to be a preacher. And, you know, they supported him just like they did uh, me being a preacher. And so, you know, I think uh, just their encouragement to find what God wanted made me have to search for that. And I remember when I was 16, uh, even though before that I was encouraged to read the Bible, my dad said, here's the Bible. You read it from cover to cover and you find out what God's word says for yourself. Don't just rely on what mom and I teach you. Find out what it says for yourself. And it made me really, um, you know, develop my own faith and my own walk with God in getting into scripture. And, and I, I just I was blessed that God did call me into ministry. Um, it's not always the easiest thing, but uh, I have no regrets. I'm so thankful for it. 
God's also worked with you with the in the area of behavior health, which is, you know, near and dear to my heart as a retired psychiatric nurse. And you work with a lot of uh, issues of recovery and uh, also counseling, right? That's correct. Yeah, we get to do a lot of uh, work with a lot of organizations that, uh, of course, uh, have students that graduate out of their program. A lot of times we'll go and speak of those graduations. And uh, we're involved in a company uh, called Let's Talk Interactive, which is a uh, behavioral telehealth company uh, that has really taken off, especially since COVID. Uh, we're working with prisons. Uh, we're working with public schools and uh, uh, doing a lot of work in the behavioral health side in these areas on top of rural cities and rural areas. Um, but, you know, one of the things that we've discovered is uh, it doesn't matter what family you're from, just about everybody we talk to knows somebody that's affected uh, when it comes to behavioral health and when it comes to addiction. And so we've uh, really tried to get that out there. A few years ago, we launched what's called uh, Recovery Sunday and started getting churches behind that. And uh, this past year, we had over 15,000 churches across the country participate in that. What we try to do is encourage pastors and churches to help people understand that, you know, church is a place where you can come in and, and not feel ashamed if you're struggling with addiction, uh, not feel ashamed if you're battling something. And I think one of the things that we discovered, and, and preachers mean well, but sometimes people are struggling. They're like, Pastor, what I do? And they're like, oh, you just need to read your Bible and pray more. And uh, that sounds good because those are very important. But sometimes people truly need professional help. And so we've tried to work and help. Uh, pastors and leaders and Christian organizations understand that it's okay to encourage people to get the right help. If I have somebody in my church who uh, is bleeding profusely, we get them to the hospital. And so if they're mentally struggling with behavioral health, we want to get them to professional health. And I think that's important. And I think people are starting to grasp that a little bit more. And we're seeing that uh, grow a little bit in churches, you know, really striving to help people who are battling with these issues. And when you understand the biochemistry of it, it really helps to realize, but there, there's more to just to spiritual issues. It's biochemistry a lot of times that needs some, some, uh, some chemistry help to get, get people uh, lined up in serotonin, dopamine, dopamine, and other things. Absolutely. And I think, you know, in this day and time in which we're living, you know, when you've got, I, I don't even want to get into all the, uh, some people call them conspiracies, but you just got all the different things that we're around today that are affecting our body that maybe we really don't fully understand what all it does, you know, with, with these towers and, you know, just all kinds of things that are, you know, messing with our body and messing with our minds. Uh, there are a lot of people who find themselves, um, you know, in balance and there's things they need to be fixed. And, and uh, sometimes it's, you know, it's medicine, sometimes it's other treatments that people need. And so, I think it's important, you know, to encourage people uh, to, you know, to seek help. And, and then sometimes people just don't want to admit, you know, hey, I'm struggling with this and I need help. And so encourage them. It's OK to admit, you know, that you have a problem. We're all flawed. We all have our own problems that we deal with. Everybody's is different, uh, but there's nothing wrong with getting help. You know, we have a full time counselor uh, at the church where I pastor and um, I went through, uh, in both 2020 and 2021, I went through cancer twice, um, went through that. Um, thankfully, you know, uh, we're cancer free and, and, uh, we were able to, to, uh, uh, to overcome that, but he would stop me every once in a while in the office and say, Hey, just checking, are you okay? And, and I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And so, you know, he would say, Hey, maybe we should talk for a few minutes and, you know, and, and, uh, I think it's always important. Sometimes it's just, being able to talk to somebody, you know, can help us. Sometimes we need more than that, but uh, it's just recognizing no matter who you are, um, none of us are superheroes and, uh, you know, we struggle through things. Uh, we grieve differently. And so just sometimes talking to somebody, seeking out help uh, can make all the difference in the world. And, and the Lord says he didn't want anybody to bear their burdens alone. We can cast our cares on him, but he also says in scripture, we're to care one for another. And so part of that is, Yes, I'm to offer to care for others, but sometimes when I need help, I need to be willing to let them take upon my burdens or find people who can help me with my burdens. And so I think it's very much a spiritual, um, biblical thing for us to get help when we need it. You know, in the next one or two minutes left in this broadcast, uh, let me ask you, you've, you've written so several books. How can people get a hold of your books and also find out uh, more about your ministry? Yeah, thank you so much for letting me be with you today. And 
uh, people can go to my website. It's just pastorbengram.com, and uh, they can find out about our films. They can find out about our books, uh, pastorbengram.com or grahamfamilyfilms.com. And uh, either one of those will will get them all that information. A lot of our uh, projects are on Prime and, and Netflix and some other uh, you know avenues that most people probably have access to. Great, great. And uh, you, you've seen it flashing down below as we've been talking. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and, and get a hold of that. Check it out. Uh, find his product. Find a, find his books. I'm sure they'll be bl- a blessing to you. Um, and then, and this, as we get ready to close, um, I, I want to encourage you to look at his website, look at his books, look at his films. But more important than that, when this interview is over, I want you to stop and, and pray for Ben. Pray for Ben and his family and his ministry that God would richly bless him. Folks, he needs your prayers and you need the practice. So pray that God would work in his life as, and, and he continues to, to follow the plan, the purpose, the hope, and the future that God's led, led before him. So thank you so much, Ben, for share, sharing with us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me and for everybody that's watching and for praying for us. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you for joining us. And if you would, keep coming back for some more morning moments.